you know that the, the world church is emphasizing uh, initiatives around the world that presents the three angels' messages to the world. This is not an easy task, but here in this building, I am here at the GC right now, everybody's talking about how to implement or how to uh, have different ideas on how to approach people with the three angels' message with all challenges to have these messages uh, adapted uh, in terms of communication to different type of people like Buddhists, Hinduists, uh, Muslims, uh, secular people, and West and East people. So we, we have this big challenge. In the Bible, uh, Revelation chapter 14, I want just to, to read the highlighted words that then a third angel followed them saying with a loud voice, if anyone uh, worship the beast and his image and receives his mark on his forehead or his head, he himself shall also drink of the wine of the wrath of God. This is not a popular message. This is not something that will attract people naturally. People are attracted by love, speech, and accept, uh, when people are uh, with their arms open wide. And that, that's true. This is human nature. But this, is, this message is the truth for today. So no matter the message is hard and difficult, we are called by the Lord to deliver that message. And... Uh, the, the best way to deliver that message is with a good smile in our face and also with a good content in our hand. And books are special for that. So I am reading a book that I want to recommend to you. This is a new compilation uh, you can find on ABC, uh, The Three Angels Messages. This book was released last year. It's a part of this initiative I mentioned to emphasize the challenge to preach the three angels' messages. And I found two quotes I want to share. The first one is uh, that this is not an out of date. There are people telling that uh, the message, Revelation 14, is out of date. So Ellen White says the th th third angel's message is being considered a matter out of date. It looks like, it seems that she is talking today to our church. And yet, the state of things in our world is revealing the end of, the end is near. Well, this is what happened. Uh, there is to be a work done that is not done. That's impressive, short paragraph, page 20. And the other page, or the other paragraph, is uh, this one. It says, uh, not a theory of man's inventing. Oh, what a wonderful subtitle. We have a sacred message to bear to the world. The third angel's message is not a theory of man's inventing, a speculation of the imagination, but it is the solemn truth of God for these last days. It is the final warning to the perishing souls of men. It is not a system of truth simply to gratify and please the intellect. It means diligent and sacrificing labor to all who accept its holy teaching. The commandments of God and testimony of Jesus must be brought to the attention of the world. The tidings of the coming of the Savior must be proclaimed. The judgment scenes must be portrayed before the enlightened minds of men and hearts must be aroused to realize the solemnity of the closing hours of provision and prepare to meet their God. What a wonderful quote. What a wonderful quote. So my friends, I wanted to share these two quotes with you to emphasize one point, the message that you have and the challenge that you accepted to distribute the great controversy here in this country, it, it is not an easy task. It is not a popular message. It is shocking message. 
it's not something that people would embrace with love because they are pursuing that. It will disturb them, disturb their lives. But this is the last solemn message that God has prepared for us and for people. So there is no choice. We must distribute that message. I want just to close telling two stories to you. The first story is uh, happened with a colleague. I want to put here on the screen his testimony that we recorded on October 8th. October 8th, we had here at the GC a special event. There was the annual council where leaders from all over the world, they joined the meeting. And we organized a book distribution that af afternoon. It was a Sabbath day. And we organized them in pairs and we distributed 10,000 books here in the neighborhood area of the General Conference, Silver Spring and other, and other counties around. And um, we were launching the idea, challenging people and about to pray for the book, a dedication prayer. And then Michael Eckhart, my colleague, invited Scott to, to share a message. Here is some pictures of that day we distributed, we dedicated the book in many languages and we had 11, uh, 15 buses and with people organized to go, all of them leaders and church members. We, we joined the church members to, to do this distribution. And here is the video I want to share with you. Please bear with me. It's a wonderful testimony. for this powerful presentation showing the importance of the book that created controversy. You know, I had a small segment plan that I was going to talk about, but then I came on the stage and I was sitting next to Brother Scott. Brother Scott, why don't you come up? And I said, Brother Scott, you know, we never met. What's your name? Well, my name is Scott from Plan Giving. And I said, I'm Michael from Publishing Ministries. How are you? And he said, you know what? This book changed my life. Scott, we have very little time. Tell me about your life before the Great Controversy, just a few seconds. Well, I was completely lost, had no idea about God. I was drinking all the time, doing drugs, just living life just for myself. I was completely lost. And where did you find the Great Controversy? Did a call order come to you? No, the call order did not come to me. It was on the campus of Western Michigan University in Kalamazoo, Michigan. It was a snowy December day. I was returning my books to the bookstore one day and on about three inches of freshly fallen snow, there was the great controversy underneath my car door. So underneath your car door, not even door knob of your house. No, no, just sitting there. I had no idea what it was. I picked it up, threw it in the back of my car. And a couple of months later, I said, what is this? It must be about the end of the world. And I started reading it and changed my life. Amen. Praise the Lord. Can you say amen? This is the reason why we are placing such a heavy emphasis on the distribution and the translation of this book. Okay, it's a wonderful story, isn't it? We didn't know about the story. Uh, Scott is a colleague of ours here at the GC. But uh, all of a sudden, we, we got a word. He is a converted through the, the great controversy. So he, he was invited to share his story. A book underneath his car door on a snow, fresh falling. So my friends, uh, the last short story I want to share with you uh, comes from uh, Ukraine. You might recognize this lady. She is the first lady of the country, uh, uh, Mam Olena Zelensky, Zelenska. And she visited a family, an Adventist family, um, that um, shelter orphans. And they have more than 10 kids in their homes. And Zelenska decided to go there uh, and 
pay a tribute to that family. Uh, she is involved in, in social activities and she visits the family, Paskevich family. And the family entertain her for a uh, few hours and they deliver two books to her, Desire of Rages and The Great Controversy. So you can now say that uh, The Great Controversy is placed in the home of Olena and President Zelensky. So they are, they have the word in their hands and we pray that the Lord somehow will bring them to the attention of this message. So thank you for bearing with me with these stories and Bible text and spirit of prophecy text. I just wanted to to infuse motivation in, in every one of you. You have before you two big initiatives in Texas and Michigan. And I pray that the Lord will bless you, and bless all that will join the distribution. Bless uh, uh, streams of light, uh, organization and leadership. So may the Lord be with all of you. This is my desire and my prayer today. Amen.